what's up y'all um this quote from bell hooks just came across my screen and it made me want to process it and made me want to expand it and dig into it and so i'm going to take a a little bit of time to do that right now the quote says white women and black men have it both ways they can act as oppressor or be oppressed Black men may be victimized by racism, but sexism allows them to act as exploiters and oppressors of women. White women may be victimized by sexism, but racism enables them to act as exploiters and oppressors of black people. Both groups have led liberation movements that favor their interests and support the continued oppression of other groups. Black male sexism has undermined struggles to eradicate racism, just as white female racism undermines feminist struggle. As long as these two groups or any group defines liberation as gaining social equality with the ruling class white men, they have a vested interest in the continued exploitation and oppression of others. And I want to say yes and amen to everything Mother Bell Hooks has said in this. And if you are not reading the works of bell hooks then you're missing an opportunity to um to deepen your praxis of um anti-whiteness and to deepen your praxis praxis of humanity um here's what i want to add to and expand to this uh is that this is true this dynamic is true and I think she gets at it in the last sentence, and that's the piece I want to expand to, which is, as long as these two groups or any group defines liberation as gaining social equality with the ruling class white men, they have a vested interest in the continued exploitation and oppression of others. What I want folks to, to get into is that all of us live at some access that is part of ruling class status. This is what I mean when I'm talking to the in the book, um, in my book about the default body, because what the default body is is the ruling class body, and that is not just a white male body. That is also an able body. It is also a thin body. It is also a cisgendered body. It is also a um, youthful or middle aged, but certainly not an aging body when you couple that with any of the other identities or intersections of identities, right? Um, it is a middle class or wealthy body. There are axes of ruling class identity that all of us hold and that often don't even go interrogated. They go without consideration without even thinking about it, without saying in what way is my relationship to ruling class status causing me to have a vested interest in the continued exploitation and oppression of others? In what ways is my able-bodiedness as part of ruling class status keeping me in a vested interest of exploitation and oppression of disabled bodies? In what way is my status as thin ruling class status keeping me in a vested interest of continued exploitation and oppression of fat people? In what way is my uh, status as cisgendered as part of the ruling class kept me in a vested interest in the continued exploitation and oppression of trans and um, genderqueer and non-binary people? Every single person in these systems of ruling class identity hold some rung of privilege that allows them to act as the oppressor and the oppressed. It is not, I wanted, it's not just black men, it's not just white women, although they they loud and proud with theirs. <laughs> but what I want you to know is that whatever access of ruling class identity, meaning just that the world is constructed for you, the world is constructed for your able-bodiedness. It's constructed for your thinness. It is constructed for your youthfulness. It is constructed for your cisgenderedness. All you have to do is look at bathrooms or plane seats um, 
or um, accessible buildings, right? Like you can look around the world and say, oh yeah, no, they totes made that world for my ruling class status. And so again, we cannot be in the discussion that somehow um, we are the oppressed and those are the oppressors and not interrogate where we hold the same kind of status and power in some area of our own being that also functions as a dynamic of oppression and exploitation. Destroy the ladder. What Bell Hooks is talking about is the ladder of bodily hierarchy, the ladder of systemic hierarchy. And the only way that we get out of that system, again, which he said is that as long as we identify liberation as gaining social equality within the ruling class white men, which actually is gaining social equality within the structures of a system of bodily hierarchy, a ladder of social and physical hierarchy, then we will never actually achieve liberation. We will only achieve further exploitation and oppression of specific kinds of bodies. You're going to have to destroy the ladder in you and in the world. Bell Hooks knew it and knew that we needed to expand it, which is why she expanded it in this other, and that's why I wanted to make it even deeper here. Where are you part of the ruling class? Reconceptualize what ruling caste means. Find out where you are in it and stop equating your privilege there as equality or liberation. It's not. If we're not all free, ain't none of us free. <laughs>